So what is a point cloud and how best to use it? If I take the fundamentals here, our point cloud is composed of a set of points. And usually with each point, we associate metadata or attributes and it can be pretty much anything that we want. Usually, um, if I explicit that, we have each of our points expressed in an Euclidean space where they will have a coordinate. So if it's x, y into d and a z axis usually that point up, right? So it means that if I take this point, I will have my coordinate x, y, z and a bunch of attributes. So why is it useful? Because you can pretty much represent anything with a point. This can be in the context of a, a GIS problem, a city or a country or a, a specific um, event that happens in the context of data acquisition that we do with LiDAR, photogrammetry, laser scanner, it usually will describe a piece of a surface. So if this is my house, it will be sampled by several points on the surface that is visible from the center of acquisition. If it's here, you see that it's shot like this um, and it returns the information of the position. With attributes, when you get a point cloud from an active sensor, usually you have at least the intensity that will reflect more or less uh, the material properties and also the angle and the distance from the scanner. And you may have also other information if it's from a top down view, right? From a LiDAR um, flight, you will have a point user ID, you will have a flight line, you will have a GPS uh, tag. All these kind of things are part of attributes. But how to best use point cloud? It's really trying to make them smart. This is something that I wrote when I did my PhD. I started that in 2015 and it's called the smart point cloud, injecting intelligence at the data level, at the point level. And then what we do usually is that we'll try to group set of points like this could be a group, which could be a semantic patch. And there we'll have an attribute of uh, planarity or have a more or less a classification in identification that it's more or less a vertical structure. So you see that from a base data, we arrive to some kind of conceptual level that is then useful for a decision making scenario where we would like to check if this is a wall or if there is a problem with the wall not being straight. If you want to know more about all these kind of things, read all my tutorials on Medium or access one of my course line at the 3D Geodata Academy.